jungle. Hi, I'm Kudo Mal. That's what it goes in and Kudo Academy, and this is Lee Taylor from Lee Taylor Karate. Um, thanks, for, good to see you, Lee. It's been a while. Pleasure to see you. It has, yeah, yeah, yeah. Time seems to be flying at the moment in a strange way. Yeah, that's it. I'm watching the senior classes are doing well. Uh, yes, it, it took me about a week or so to jump on and, and jump on that system of teaching online, but it's three times a week. It seems to be paying off for my group. It seems to be working for my group. There seems to be lots out there now and you can do sessions every day and every hour, any style, but I think if I was to teach five days a week like I would, I think it would burn me out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really different. Tra I travel to five different dojos normally and that's, yeah. that's okay, but if I did five nights in my living room, I think I'd be burned. <laughs> <laughs> How are you dealing with not having someone to, to demonstrate on? Well, I got my son, George. Okay. He's been punch him a few a number of times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, bigger, he's bigger than me now, so it's... Uh, yeah, he's a big guy now, isn't he? Yeah, he's fully back. So, uh, yeah, they, yeah. I'm, like you say, I've got I got George, and we, we we do a little bit, but you know, we we still you still still miss that interaction. The yeah. training, yeah. Well, that's yeah. good. You know, and the students are supposed to keep your dojo open, so that's yeah. that's that's you know, um, our guys have been very lucky, you know, with um, some recent donations and stuff because you know both of us were with uh, BCKA. Um, yeah. But we're not with the, the registered uh, sports council, which is yeah. the only kind of avenue for for money, really. Uh, besides, obviously, the government money that's coming through. But you know, I'm not self-employed at the minute, so but I know you are. So you're yeah. waiting on that, really, aren't you? Yeah, um, uh, yes. Yeah, like you say, in this in this strange time, it, you do get uh, humanity come shining through, and I've had really, really nice, heartwarming. Uh, humbling messages from from parents about the sessions and things like that. So, like you were just saying about your donations, it's just it's, yeah. uh, you know it uh, reaffirms your belief in humanity. <laughs> yeah, it does, doesn't it? I, mean, I think that's a, that's a good um, kind of way into what I was going to talk to you about. Really, is that you know I've been watching um, you know some of the things from um, Les and there's Ken doing our mental health. Um, you know, doing you know martial arts for that. Um, but you know, I think that there's there's a lot that we can offer really because you know we um, uh, we we cross paths with all of these people. Um, yeah. Chris Hansen is trying to get everybody together, um, and I'm seeing that like obviously Ian uh, Abernethy's forum seems to get a lot of people in there. Um, I'm going to start hopefully posting some stuff in there. But you know, um, and for for people who don't know you, Lee, right? Um, you know, can you just state where you're based? Yeah, um, I'm based in uh, Wales, UK. I've got three, three clubs in Wales, uh, mid Wales. So, uh, Preston, Raider, and Landed Lois. And I live right on the border of Wales and England. So, just pop over the border, and I have a club in England as well, yeah. Webley. So, but predominantly and historically Wales. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, I mean, and that's how, you know, I, I was talking to my wife earlier and um, <laughs> about how long have I known Lee now? And she said, I don't know, maybe about six years. And um, and I remember because if you remember, I reached out to you uh, when I was in Italy proposing to my wife. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Yes, <laughs> I, I remember was, that. <laughs> I said, well, you must have a very understanding fiance there. <laughs> <laughs> And um, you know, and I, and I sort of see the, you know, you produced a book, and uh, you know, you sent it to me, which is great. And I thought one of the, the the bits I don't like about books, if I'm honest, you know, you you get kind of one, and then it's like, yes. and then the next one is yeah. like this, you know. And yeah. but it was kind of the intro you're talking about, the, you know, the, the is it the karate widow? Is it you had in the yes. book? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that, like, that's what she is. <laughs> yeah, there's loads. There's, yeah, I'm sure people can uh, respond to. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm kind of skimming through my Facebook and uh, right, he, you know, this the Taylor man, he, he looks like the real deal, you know, because I think like you connected to, to Ian, um, you know, and I know you host Ian and you go to, you know, his, his um, retreats, you know, his, his yeah, what yeah. Call it? yeah, residential, um, yeah. residential, that's for you. And, um, you know, but the bit that I was really interested in is the fact that 
you've got like um, you know katas that I wouldn't have uh, practiced, but the similarity in you know the the connections and stuff. Have you got your book there, Lieber Handy? Uh, yeah, that got uh, this one. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. The Ananku yes. book. Yeah. yeah, I highly recommend it. That's really really good stuff. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and, uh, and um, Ian mentioned your your DVD as well because I I've been trying to do some of the pad work uh, things when I was when you were showing me before and uh, <laughs> I, I think after like I've got a rule of three you know when if, if I can't do it in three I'm usually gone somewhere else you know so <laughs> well that's why I read them they do that's that's like me when I ever watch if I'm ever looking through YouTube and looking at drills or things like that and just scanning if it hasn't caught me within a few minutes I'm, I'm yeah. gone so when you see like yeah. these 10-15 minute uh, videos I'm like mm, no <laughs> so I yeah, just go yeah. and that's just me right? so that's why I deliberately made the paddles quite small they're like three or four yeah. minutes long out of the cat because yeah. you don't want a memory test you want something that you can jump straight in yeah. um, and the idea was just all I wanted to do was reinforce the angles in kata and then mess the order of the kata up. So pick three or four moves out of the, out of the kata and string it into a pad drill. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't want it to be hugely um, difficult and finite moves. Just right, let's go. Is four moves. This is how you can put it together in a drill. Bam, bam, bam. And the third part was so used to doing drills that are just linear, one way. Yeah. yeah. Part, they just stand there and sort of not do anything. Yeah, exactly. Think, yeah. Yeah, for me, for pad oh, Yeah, that's it. And the pad holder is more important than the person doing the technique. Yeah, so yeah. If you don't get a good pad holder, then you can't really bring it to life. So the yeah, pad holder has some job to do as well. So you get this two-way interaction and it just sort of brings it to life, brings the catcher to life and you can sort of put something into it. You can hit quite hard. Because we, yeah, we, all, we all train in a certain way. Like you mentioned, all those guys you mentioned, we've all got this way of training. Yeah, yeah. In our bankai, but we can't really go flat out all the time on a part. No, it's part the variation of only, you know, and because I attended um, your split course with Ian, um, and that's what you did in, in your half, and and um, in one of um, Ian's uh, broad like broadcasts recently, he, you know, when he was asked the question about pad work or kata based pad work, you know, he he pretty much said you're the man. So. Yes, you know, I can um, see the, the Hayan Padres, yeah. yeah. There it is. <laughs> so, have you got any more coming out? Have you got anything else that you're going to be trying to do? Uh, yes, I've expanded on that. Well, this well, DVDs seem to be um, it's a bit like the old VHS now. They seem to be going by the dodo. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, by yeah. So, yeah, I've expanded on those. I've got another step of Hayan videos where I'll then take it another step further where you can expand on the pad drill turn it into a live semi semi live session with your partner and then and then just try and flow with it so the cat comes out when you respond to your partner so yeah a year yeah. to fill but it's that interactive so like I, I found um I don't know about you now with you know when when my class was kind of closed it, you know it was you know it was literally a few days wasn't it it was kind of right yeah. you've got to close um I made the decision to close the club um, earlier in the week, even though you know there wasn't, uh, there were still people functioning because you know yeah. we um, as a as a style, you know we do pretty much everything with a partner. So it was mm -hmm. kind of not really what we can do. And I've migrated our karate practice, you know, to be everything about partner. So like I'm thinking to myself now when someone said, "Can you do something on Zoom?" and I was like, um, yeah, okay. <laughs> and um, you know, it's taken me till now just because I've been looking at what other people have been doing and and um yeah, it's and it's it's quite hard, isn't it, sitting in front of a camera and, and you can't kind of go, right, well move that or and, uh, uh, and you're lucky that you're quarantined with your son as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, Yeah, he helped me for a couple of times. He was sort of my son was sort of my techie helping me with the, the laptop and the phone and and don't realize how much you don't know until you have to then start teaching in front of a camera. We yeah. all try and film, we all try and film clips and things and use them as um, <laughs> content, but then actually you have to go right on teaching. <laughs> right yeah. to you, this little yeah. square. It was, uh, it was a steep learning curve. But like you said, yeah, it was very fast, wasn't it, when decisions were made to shut and close. I was like, oh, it's fine, the schools are open, it'll be okay. And then 
schools are shutting. Ah, right, okay. And then the leisure centres were, no, we're staying open. We thought, okay, if the leisure centres are open, I, sh- I would be okay. Boom, within the next day, yeah. everything was shut. And I was like, yeah, I had you know, quite a bit of a wobble myself. As I mean, you yeah. mentioned about the uh, mental health stuff, like what you do and um, um, Ken and, is it Ken? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Ken. Yeah, a few other guys. We're just because we train and we've been training for years, we're not infallible to no. these spouts of uh, you know depression and feeling feeling um, you know uh, strange when something like that suddenly shuts and your control is taken away from you and you think yeah, oh, gonna do it. So definitely had a definitely had a wobble and we still had still still comes over in waves when you think about it, but yeah, it's just a matter of. Uh, I think what we're good at doing, martial arts, is we just right. This is it, is it? Okay, well, let's find our way around it. Yeah, yeah, totally. How do we, how do we adapt? I think that's what's beneficial about the martial artists, but doesn't mean to say we're not infallible. Uh, I have moments, definitely. No, so, I mean, that, that's why I was, I was asking you, really, have you done any more material? Because, I mean, this is the time, really, isn't it? I mean, I can see that um, people are, are trying to push different platforms, but, you know, that resource that you spent your time doing, you know, that's something that people can, can do. There's, there's uh, someone I met in uh, from Canada recently, and, and she's throwing her son around everywhere, so <laughs> trying to practice everything. So it's, there's, there's ways and means, isn't there, you know what I mean? Yeah, but you see Steve Blackwell's judo uh, yes. lesson? Yeah. So, yeah, so um, Steve, like I was talking to Steve, uh, judo Steve, we call him judo Steve. Um, so that's, been, that's been hilarious. I mean, you, we got a, like a number of black belts now with all different styles and stuff. And, you know, we're bouncing ideas off each other. It's, it's, it's really, really good. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. brought the, the martial art community even closer together because yeah, yeah. look how fast we responded. You know, yeah. within a couple of weeks, like you say, there is so much choice out there now. Oh. That even that even groups are recruiting people to their clubs now for online yeah. sessions. Yeah. So new well, students. Yeah, no. <laughs> There's platforms and styles and all sorts out there already. There's quite a lot. I, yeah, the content that I've created, I'm still a bit unsure when to launch it because of the partner aspect. And uh, you just got to get it out there, mate. If people want it, they want it. If they don't, they don't. And then. Um... You know, I think that your work around it, I think you've got, it's like when you look at Kata, isn't it? And, and you go, oh, I know what that's for. You know, you yes. have the light bulb moment. It's going to be the, be the same, won't it? It'd be absolutely the same. But my background originally was karate, and I, my highest grade um, is in karate, but um, a lot of the international recognition that I'm getting now is to do with kudo in the mixed martial arts. So if you don't, yeah. if you don't know what uh, kudo is, check out. Um, it's a mixed martial arts, and obviously you have judo and karate, and a lot of arts, but everything's relevant. So, and, yeah. and that, that's how we met, really, wasn't it? Because I approached yeah. you and said, "Look, you, you, you're actually practicing your karate in a pragmatic way, you know, yeah. and a very functional way. Have you got anybody that would want to see if it works, you know, and test out their skill and prowess?" Yeah, and, and, you, and you know, you, you've uh, put people, you put people through in the first kudo uh, championship yeah, in Wales, so demo. Yeah, yeah. You see, it came at the, it came at the right time, really, because um, when I was like you say, moved into that pragmatic side of it. We, we were still, you know, sparring to a certain degree, yeah. <clears throat> but not, you know, not to the level that um, your Kudo channel um, offered. I was still trying to get my head around of putting it all, all together. And from yeah. where I came from, the competitive side, yeah, yeah, sure. it was too, that was not the wrong, that was the wrong avenue to try and link it all together. So yeah. we'd been a while without, um, doing that side until you came along and I thought, ah, that's the link that yeah, I need yeah. for um, the guys who want to try yeah, yeah. put it into that, into that system. And uh, it's the closest thing you can get from all ranges in a fight. Exactly, which is, yeah. I think what I want to look for, really. So, but yeah, I mean, you can... I, So you jumped in there, but you were talking about your pad work drills. In, in the Kudo Championship, two of your boys, you know, they're, they're very tall guy. Um, uh, yeah, Tobias and Tobias. Yeah, Finn, I mean, yeah. when they, when they came in and they were they were they were kind of clinching, you know, parrying, hitting. You can see all the the muscle memory and you know that they've got from the pad work drills and that. Very relevant when it came to the to actually, you know, the yeah, shock of being hit so hard and head yeah. was 
and changed it for him, didn't it? But they added all definitely, there. Definitely, it was uh, like I say, we do we do it to a certain level in the club where they get this uh, this this um, introduction into that that level of interaction with a partner. But that was the very first time that they had to you know step on the mat and go yeah. right. Yeah, come to war. Yeah, but that is perfect. It's a perfect, um, the perfect avenue for people who want to test that part of. Yeah, that's a, I mean, that was my, my hope, really, because obviously um, I'm a branch chief for Wales um, as part of the UK. But you know, you, you know, for me, you were instrumental in taking more people from traditional martial arts into a platform. Because I think what people, I've been trying to put together a video about styles, but it's very difficult without actually starting to tread on people's toes or possibly offend people and things like that. And they're, they're mainly down to the rule sets and the rule sets are not actually what they've come up with, but they have to honor them, don't they? And when you say the Kudo has got like very little rules, um, the rules they have got, which obviously is for safety, is when you, you're on the, you can't ground a pound, you know, because the head's on the floor. You know, and so you've got to simulate on that. Um, there's a few other things that you can't do in Kudo, but most things is, is relevant. Yeah. So um, I was thinking, right, if I can just open this up to the world, because everybody's going to love this, you know, <laughs> and they can still practice their karate style and they yeah. can get on the mat and, and see if it works. Yeah. Um, but it hasn't translated, it's very slow out development Wales. Um, mm. You know, it's quite hard, but. I just if anybody's watching this and, and you've got a karate group then you're not doing the, the semi-contact sort of point scoring or uh, or maybe the Kyokushin knockdown styles or even if you are and you want to kind of take it up a gear then you know give us a shout at some point and you know join me in Lee and others and try and get this moving forward but you know I'm massively passionate about it and um, yeah that comes across to be fair and that, that <laughs> uh, it's well it helps because it, uh, you need somebody like that like yourself with the uh, where you want to take it and what you want to do with it and um it's just like just like anything else people are possibly a, a bit wary of changing the way they do things or changing the way they compete or, or whatever like i said so yeah. but you lay it out and you tell everyone um what it is how it works where you're going to go with it what to expect and it's there for people's choice then there's there's no yeah. hidden, there's nothing hidden in there where you finally get a shock of a wow! I didn't expect it to be like this. <laughs> you know, yeah, you're, yeah. you're very um, professional in the way you do that. So, oh, thank you. That's very much appreciated. Because I said the boys that I took down, and they haven't competed, not at, not at that level or at that no. platform, but they were completely taken from stage one to you know the end of the fight, and they were comfortable yeah. in every every stage. So. Yeah, and you've got to think of yourself. You know, that you're, you've taught those boys well because. You know, you think about it, if they haven't been fighting and they go down and have a, a fight like that, you know, mm. it's they you know that they can do it for real. Yeah. You know, if they if you really had to do it, you know, that's and that's always the insecurities we have with martial artists. And the more you remove yourself from contact, the more mm. you kind of start doubting maybe with yeah. this work, how would I fit, you know, fear? But I want to ask you a question, Lee. There's, everybody asks, you know, oh, what brought you into martial arts and and that sort of stuff. And I've heard it on, you know, your podcasts as well. So check these podcasts out if you haven't, yeah. um, you know, um, and that's the really interesting thing, but we, you know, I, I wanted to ask you what actually keeps you in martial arts because, you know, how long have you been training now? Um, I started when I went to secondary school. So what's that, what's that, 11? About 10 years then, is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what can you tell? <laughs> All right, let's look at that. <laughs> well, I had hair and I wasn't great when I started. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think secondary school age, uh, I was 11, but then I only dabbled when I went to college and uni. Um, then come out and was chasing a career for a few years. So uh, I would then say back in it properly, properly, 99. 1999, just after my second son, George, was born. I think the wife wanted me back out of the house, really, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, went and now. You, gone. you went and haven't come back till now. <laughs> yeah. so, what keep, what, so what keeps you in it then? What's, what's, what's the thing you know, that, that keeps you doing it now? Do you know, it's, um, 
it's just it's just something that it's just it is me it's just me it's so i don't need to look for things to keep me interested or keep me motivated because it is who i am yeah you know what i mean it is what i do yeah um so it's just literally intrinsically in me um it's the longest thing i've ever done um once i went full time um back in 2007 so i couldn't think of doing anything else now i made that leap to do it and it's it's <laughs> it's, it's a weird feeling it's just it's me for me i was um i was kind of lucky really because in uh, about 2000 before coming into gojin uh, karate i was um training and, and and i would never have left it so i understand it, that um why people are so loyal to their martial arts and there's a few people have been saying about them leaving uh, some of the people i mentioned earlier actually joining the bcka you know just yeah. looking at that um but it was for me it was like I, i'd been through those changes I go to the Kudo Academy with Steve and Kieran and AJ, you know, where we're the reason that we continue is because we're traditionalists, if you like, the fact that we like the etiquette and the gi, um, yeah. but we don't take ourselves too seriously. So, yeah. you know, you get your key on, which is just basically like uh, boxing, standing boxing sort of stuff. Um, and some of it's taken from Kyokushin. Um, but once you've done that part of a lesson, the rest of it's open. So the guy can teach you whatever. Yeah. And you haven't got someone stood over your shoulder going, uh, that's not karate. You know, <laughs> or, or someone going, that's not, that's judo, yeah. that is. And, you know, um, so like what keeps me in it is the fact that I've gone into an organization where I can learn anything and no one really comments, you know. Um, and grades actually are based on the ability to fight, which is not what I think of karate, because karate for me is longevity, you know. So... Uh, you you know yourself well you've got some influences i i see the the bromance with mick tully i see some of that as well. yeah yeah, but, yeah. Um, so who what, what tell us that tell people who, what have you been doing you know as in to bring him back to your karate um well like you say when, like, when you're in karate you're in the group and you think that's what it is you're within that bubble as it were and you think I, i'm happy to be here and this is cool and this is how it is you don't think of anything outside of that bubble until you come across something or you you start quizzing or thinking about something um it's only when i sort of created my uh when, my, when i went professional in 2007 there was two things i wanted to do um i wanted to study kata slightly differently because i said there must be something more than step yeah. punch block counter yeah so that was one question i wanted to answer there was going to be something more to it than that i think wrong with where i came from no, 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 that's how you were taught because that's yeah. how they were taught. So they don't yeah. know any different because they're passing on what they know. Yeah, yeah. And we did the step punch block counter bunk, I not to a great extent because it was more of competitive kata basically, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, so that was one question I needed to answer. But the second one was while I was teaching it, I had this feeling that if I got to teach somebody to look mm. after themselves, I need some knowledge on that because I can count. The altercations I've had in my life on one hand, oh, okay. and not all. Well, not all. You haven't got a very punchable face like me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I got a face I might, with. Yeah, I might say well, my self-defense skills must be pretty amazing if I've only had five <laughs> altercations in my life, or I just don't go and visit places that uh, warrant that. But but yeah. I felt that if I was teaching something, then I need some more knowledge and experience on that. So first one, obviously the cata. I obviously came across Ian in some articles and um, he happened to be somebody who was hosting a seminar near to me. So I thought, well, I'll go and check it out. It was best, you know, best time to do it. And that was the poo, light bulb moment in my first seminar yeah, with yeah. him. And then the other thing was, well, who is the next, uh, who would be the next best person to do the, um, the um, you know, the self-defense, the uh, reality stuff. And that was obviously Jeff Thompson. Yeah. So um, I went and trained, or well, I still trained with Ian, um, yeah. and started with, with Jeff just to get that idea of what is this um, reality. Yeah, it was groundbreaking stuff that was, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah definitely at the time. Um, yeah. Like I said, because I didn't have, well, I had first hand experience, obviously, but yeah, I just wanted to study it more. Um, 
with Ian that are still going, still going on to this day. So that was yeah. back in 2007, 2008. Um, I don't suffer fools gladly. I don't think that I've been on one seminar and thinking, that's it, he's amazing, he's got the answers to everything <laughs> in a yeah. four hour seminar. Yeah. Um, so I thought, well, I need to study this in more depth. So I was just kept going on as many as I could. And then I was lucky enough to get on his introductory instructor award yeah. a couple of years yeah. later. Um, and then managed to study his method in depth then yeah, and then became a full instructor under his method yeah. uh, a couple of years later again. So that was like a four year period. Right. Um, while I was studying and doing some courses with Jeff, that's where I met Mick Tully yeah. <laughs> and Al Peaslin. Um, and they just offered me, I wasn't looking for it at all because I had those two things I was trying to work on to bring that's back the to Min the It's a Minnesota Cali group, isn't it? Yeah, so, Minnesota yeah. Cali group. I didn't know they were doing that because obviously Jeff is a karate guy. Um, so Al and Mick were karate guys as far as I knew at the time. Oh, right. And so Al, and Al, and Al Peasland invited me down to their group, a Sunday group, to train with them. And I looked at um, Al and Mick moving and I said, you're not moving like karate guys. <laughs> karate guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what is this? You, what are you doing? And they said, where where we do and uh, Jeet Do and then Carly and blah, 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 and, and sticks and stuff. And I thought, I need to be looking at this. <laughs> so yeah. it was going on a course that I wanted to do with Jeff and then seeing Alan and Mick going, that's what I need to be looking at. Yeah. And it became, I was just selfish about it, really. It was for me. It wasn't yeah. for me to give, bring back to the club and, and show. I thought there's movement in this. And there's flow in this that I need to be looking at to make, um, to add that to what I was doing because it's again, it was that range. So yeah. we're starting to learn from Ian, the kata range isn't step punch block counter. And then yeah. with the guys that Alan Mick and the Carly and the flow, I think, well, there's another flow to that range as well. The way yeah. they move in and out of range, yeah. is this range, how they bridge that gap. And then obviously you, got, you get to the range that, you know, Ian's amazing at, you know, that kata range. Yeah. And then, um, so that developed from there, really. That was, again, I think about 2009, I think, I met with Alan Mick. So I've been studying the JKD and the Kali and Panatukan with the Minnesota Kali group since then, really. But there's nothing new under the sun. It's like I said, your karate teachers only pass on what they know and what yeah. they've been shown. But karate has a huge amount in it but you need somebody to say here yeah, look at this yeah <laughs> do it yeah, this yeah. way try this and i saw so many shapes so many movements from from the carly and, and stuff that i thought but like you say you say ah i know where that is yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. That is. exactly <laughs> it's only because i weren't shown in the karate i first learned that's yeah, all yeah. it is yeah. and so you just need somebody to go well, we do it like this, and you think, I've already got that. It's in. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. But you know, the thing that I've, I've noticed in the last sort of, I don't know, five, ten years that, you know, I no longer I look for, you know, what it looks like um, because you've got to go from muscle memory, haven't you? It's got to be what it feels like. Yeah. You know, because you get, you've got this kind of fast twitch, you know, the beginning of each movement, the way that you're going to transition your weight. And when you've got arms and it's a mess, and that's one of the criticisms you get with Kudo, it's like, well, oh, it's messy and it's, you know, it's just like a scrap and stuff. Yeah, it is a scrap. Yeah, exactly. you know, <laughs> and that's what it's meant to be. You know, it's like, you know, the, the, I say to my students, you know, like you go to a Kudo bout, you, you, you win by knockout or submission. If it goes to the refs, then, you, you know, it could be a home advantage, it could be anything. Because... Yeah. You know, let's face it, it's subjective, isn't it? And people are biased and stuff. And, you know, if it was a fight on the street, my mates would say I won the fight. <laughs> and his mates would say he did, you know? So, you know, if he's got more friends than me, then there you go. So as far as I'm concerned, that's as close as you get for it. But what I'm saying about, because um, I've been putting out um, material with, with Judo Steve, because I'm like um, looking at him and the way that he does the throws and karate is like has a bigger range of movement um you know the judo is really about the contact and making you know mm. close quarter lift and you know uh, transition and balance and all of those things in karate and you know i i, I start to think to myself maybe i'm you know you see 
because you're looking too much. Yeah. You know? So I'm, I'm seeing that that's an application to this cata and that's an application to that cata, but actually probably not. It's maybe because I'm just looking a lot. So what we, you know, for me, like, I mean, this is what I was going to say at the beginning really was about the mental health side of it. It's like uh, the bit about the kudo um, or the way of fighting with a lot of contact is that um, internationally you, you can meet people and then when you fight with them because it's so traumatic you know afterwards it's like any you know professional uh, boxing bout or mma you know they uh, they talk you know at the start and at the end they're hugging and they're best friends because the, it's over and then i think through trauma you make friends for life you know yeah. and the, the the you can't be doing that all of the time you know and and i think like i, I practice the the tai chi Shibashi, which is the 18 movements for health and that's all it ever was you know i didn't learn yang style there even though these 18 movements are from yang style um that was really just for me to start building my confidence as a kid you know because yeah. like my asthma my eczema um you know kind of it's when you have a childhood disability um you're separated from your group so you need something for yourself you know, you need something which is mine. So I was being taught Tai Chi alongside the Karate because yeah. when, I, when I couldn't do the high level sports side, they give me something to do there. Like, you know, when I got better, it was the bow, you know, and the side and things like that. But, you know, that is really close to me now is, as moving, moving meditation because I learned that and learned the breathing. I can apply that to Kata, you know, and I think that's where... Um, you know, my my tip to anybody really is that like when you say cat is bollocks, then there's no point of practicing it. There's <laughs> other, element, other elements, isn't there? You know, with the cat. Yeah, yeah. And I, well, you know, I watch yeah, definitely cat. Cat changes its importance as you get older. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all about um, keeping yourself. What's the cat that you were teaching on the course with with uh, this uh, grip? In uh, can you remember? There was the the cat the cat. Um, I'd seen you demonstrate it. Oh, the, kak the kakate. Well, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, that comes from various characters. There's an element, I'll move back a little bit. There's an element of it in Basai, Dai, there's an element yeah. in Senpai. Oh, like, like this sort of thing. Yeah. 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 Like a yeah. parry. And that's the, one of the motions I actually saw in uh, in JKD and Carly. They call like yeah. a parry and, and they bridge and they go for the eyes. Yeah. yeah. This, is very, this motion is everywhere in, in most arts where you parry and cover or grab. So. But I think yeah. like, that's the difference between the guys in the, the BCKA and, and, you know, with, and, and he, you know, I keep referencing Ian, but, he, you know, he has been the driving force for a lot of the people who have come out of places from all over the world, you know. Um, yeah. But the, the, the thing is that I'm, like, with Kata, like, I, I really don't like the, the whole, you know, short, you know, really sharp kind of make it full range of movement because um, what I was taught within the Tai Chi was like 70% of the movement. You know, so if it's 70%, the last 30% is the return. So nothing really goes 100%. And that was the conflict with the cry. It's like, this yeah, is 100% yeah. out. You know, when uh, some people would argue like 97 or, you know, yeah. 95 or whatever. But um, I, when I was looking at that, I was thinking, my God, you know, with the, the kata, if you if quickly hear, then it becomes so much sport because it's about look, not feel. No, exactly. Uh, and now, like... Um, it was a blessing really to be part of an organization where, where you can see people practice kata and because they're thinking of the application, it kind of makes the whole body come alive. Oh, it certainly does. Yeah, yeah. It definitely does. If you understand the, the application of it or the, yeah, the brutality of it, it does yeah. bring on a different persona when you look at it. Oh, yeah. totally. And I, and I know the katas that I know, like, like Teki on a handshi, you know, I, I, that's one of my go-tos. So you'll see, like, you'll see my face look very serious when I'm doing that one. And when I'm doing other cat is that I don't know necessarily all the application. I just skim through them like I'm on holiday, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and that's, well, that's, 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 that's what, the, yeah, well, coming from the, the background of uh, my style, as it were, the sugar Kai tutorial. Yeah. <laughs> Over 40 years on this, uh, when I was younger, um, learning um, katas for, I used to just love just learning more, learning another one, learning another one, but not learning them. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's just, oh, let's have another one. Let's have another yeah. one. But now I don't even go anywhere near that amount. <laughs> on my list, enough so you can have enough uh, to study and get enough skill set out of it. So, uh, 
So and that's the, the, another common thing that I, that I found with the uh, skies as well, and the kind of more the mental health theme is that um, we we're a little bit more modern. Um, it's not all sensei and stand and you know um, it's directed one way, because you know when it when you know I've been working with kids with in traumatic situations for the, till they're sort of sixteen. You know I've been doing that for seventeen years, and you know these kids that when their things go wrong in their life and they haven't got their core things sorted like shelter, warmth, love, those things at, at home, then, you know, they're going to take it out on someone and I've never taken it personal, you know, and I've been attacked and stuff in work, but not many times because if you value people and you talk to them, then they're more likely to invest in a relationship with you. And I, and I see that like when I walk into your club, I, I feel that there's that kind of openness, that rapport. It's not people stood in corners stretching and throwing axe kicks and you know, like the old bad competitions used to be, you know? Yeah, yeah. My, my students, they, I encourage them to talk, you know, yeah. and that's why we have so much fun. And, you know, yeah. the evidence is out for any educator, you'll know that people learn through fun quicker. Absolutely. If you don't enjoy it, you're not going to do it, are you? No, 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 that's all. And that's not. probably another reason why I'm still doing it, because I just look like fun. Yeah. It is so fun when you get smacked in the head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm always, I'm always just smiling. If somebody's doing a bunker application on me on a course or whatever, and yeah, they go a little bit heavy-handed or whatever, and I'm just laughing. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah thank you for just that. The enjoyment, <laughs> of it. yeah, just that enjoyment. Of it. Yeah. The balance will be restored. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I just think you know the the guys. Um, you know, for me this year, um, you know, it's this time last year I lost my dad. And, you know, I, I dropped and, um, you know, we hold everything so close to it. It's like we would have this conversation, you know, and I'm quite open with everybody. I, I'm, you know, I'm not the type of guy to, he's not attention seeking. It's just like, this is what it is. You know, I'm struggling with this. Um, and emotional literacy um, for me and emotional intelligence is a big part of my job to help others be able to do it. But it's much different when it's you. Yeah. You know, it, like I was looking at the, the type of things that I go through with the kids and work and I just couldn't make head or tail of it. You know, it just, you just can't, you're totally froze and you're totally blocked out from life. Everything's too much. And, um, I found now that again, going back to Kata, that as much as I like the, the, the mixed martial arts and that, and the learning and things, I always tend to go back to the, the things that as a child, the Kata is like, uh, here and need And I, I, for some reason it was like, ah, bang for us, you know, <laughs> Um, it was that and the, the Tai Chi you are regressed to, uh, to find that way back. Does yeah. that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because when you give so much of yourself in, in just teaching martial arts, but in the career that you were having as well, the way you were helping kids, that you, you're giving so much out. You, you've just become depleted yourself. So when a life event happens to you, it's going to be, gonna be heavy, heavier yeah. because something needs to help you. And because you, you, we, we always give it, it's quite hard then to say, help. Yeah, yeah, totally, yeah. It was the it hardest is. thing ever. Yeah. Hardest thing ever. But, it, you know, the, that's what I was saying. I, what I didn't realise in, in the way that the, the club that did have evolved, that you haven't got, like most clubs, you've got the main man and then you've got the next the person mm -hmm. second. Um, I haven't got that anymore. I've got like six guys. Yeah. Some of them wear white belts. They like, you know, did then Tang Soo Do, and they've done like judo, and a few of them done Muay Thai, and all the rest. They're really well-rounded martial arts, and belts actually don't mean anything to them. It's yeah. actually what we provide to them. And I, I was open with them, and they kept the club going. So the Gojin Akuda Academy is still going because of those guys. Yeah, it was the same with. I'm so lucky to have a group of guys. The same with with mine when I had my accident, and I was out of action for a few months. They just that was horrendous, that was. I went down an accident that you were like... <laughs> Slight little issue. If I can find that photograph, I'll, I'll try and uh, edit it into this. Oh, I can send it again. Yeah, send it to me again and I'll, I'll post it up. <laughs> I still got it. Yeah, so they say, um, like George and Neil. You couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, an accident and just broke my neck. But yeah, um, they stepped up and kept the clubs going while I was trying to focus on rehabilitation. But yeah, you have this you have this group ethic rather than like you say, um, 
instructor and then everyone else down below we come from those groups and we we all know that they're still there we all have experience of these groups where you couldn't speak to higher grades or yeah. approach or, or approach the japanese instructor that type of thing but yeah yeah, yeah that was like one reason why i took the um, i took off the the dan bars off the belt all oh, right okay you got your, I call you got my, my grandmaster belt or my master Ken belt. Yeah, how many stripes? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love it, I love it, but it's like, I, I, it's, yeah, it's, it's so rigid, I, can, yeah. I can't really fight with it on, so I kind of put it on the side just to show people. <laughs> yeah. I think it just helps that we're just in the same, we're in the same group together, it's like you've got the same belt on as me, we're just here to help each other. Yeah. I've, just do, I've just been doing it a little bit longer, but as I get older, I need help, <laughs> memory. Yeah. <laughs> what was that it's, what was that like you losing stripes as you're getting old, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Not the honorary stripes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that's, I think that's that's good as well because it's like um because I remember when I found your website and it said Lee Taylor Cray, I was like, check this guy out, naming his karate style after himself. You know. <laughs> and, and and um yeah, now, I bet. now thinking about it, I think I'm I'm the fool because I'm trying to adopt the Japanese terminology for something. That, that you know is organic and actually like I said to you at the beginning it's it's your career you know you're teaching it you know yeah. and, it, and that doesn't mean that you're not going to be rather, you know open to where you're getting things from because no. it's like when you're teaching you've you've said like this is I've been influenced by this person that person as you're doing it and I, I think that's that's what keeps that kind of lineage that people are so fixated on isn't it it's like, yes yeah you, you've um respected your oh, yeah lineage, definitely yeah. respect where you definitely respect where you come from and you always pay uh pay homage to the people who've influenced you but um is like guru um dan in a santa um yeah. one of his um requisites is not to criticize any other arm yeah. and that's filtered down all through his instructors so the minnesota carly head instructor is rick fay which is yeah. one of guru dan's instructors and the same thing never criticize any other art um and if you think about it you will find that the head of the bcka peter and ian are the yeah. same are the same they don't get involved in that type of thing yeah on with what they need to be getting on with they they, they work hard with what they're doing and i think it's, it's a valid point we get we can get easily get lost into name calling and style blagging and yeah. but you just this doesn't serve a purpose. We just need to be getting on with what we do, and yeah, because I think that you know the the etiquette, the Japanese culture um, that we and that was for me. It was definitely an attraction. It's still is one of the reasons I still I still practice it the way that I do, and why um, I wouldn't go right take gear off, rash vest on. Let's let's, yeah, let's start exactly. doing. Uh, cage, I'm a cage. I'm a cage fighter now. Yeah. You know, um, I, it's not going to be doing. Yeah, karate right, still got that to offer. Yeah. And I think people are, are gravitating towards it the way the way we're changing, times are changing. I think it's gonna go full circle like everything does. Yeah. It's gonna come back. Well course. that's like uh, when I was in um I was in Japan, um and uh, Zuma Takashi, you know, the the Juku Cho, the, the grandmaster for Kudo. Um I I, I spoke with him briefly at at the um the, you know, the after party, Sayonara party and all the rest of it. But I realized that the years in Korea of, you know, knowing your mat etiquette, you know, as in walking 90 degrees, bowing before you enter, all of those things actually stopped a lot of really awkward situations that I probably would have walked into if I hadn't learned that, you yeah. know, I'm walking backwards after you're greeting someone rather than just turning your back on them, all yeah. of those sorts of things. I think that they've, they've, they've got their place and I'd be, I'd be a bit disappointed if I'm honest. If if all of the arts went right, well, we're in we're in UK, so we'll just te we'll just teach our way and forget yeah. about the Japanese part because actually that that gives you and that also for me was that kind of childhood dream. You know, it created this yeah. this hope that 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 was that's what success looks like because I say to kids, what's success? And they say, oh, big house with a car, you know, <laughs> uh, and lot, lots of that, like you know, and yeah. um, and if you say to them, well happiness is success isn't it and then they go yeah that's all that isn't it in the house and the car and i say well you know what was the dream and you know kids have been rationalized to the point that their their dreams are being rationalized you know and i think that's that's why like for me going to japan didn't disappoint no. it didn't disappoint at all um 
but you know there's there's also a bit of romanticizing going on that was there with uh, the art you know and yeah. you know like i've heard so much because i had to look into the uh, kyokushin um, element of of kudo um, and i'd never really looked into that art as much because obviously being from a almost like a shotokan uh, derivative art um i was like well what is this and when i was sat with uh, azuma in the malta course um, he was telling me about the conversations he was having with Masoyama about um, the head contact because there was a number of them that wanted the head contact, but Masoyama was like, you know, that's I understand that, but that's not what we're doing, and you know, gave Azuma the, you know, the blessings to to go ahead that route if you like, um, but you know, and there's things, there's conversations to say that Masoyama had um, black belts. <clears> or <throat> black belt, whatever, in uh, judo, um, which I've, I've been looking at recently, I can't seem to find, but that's irrelevant. But um, Azuma is, is um, even though, like I talked to him about karate throw um, from a kata, and he looked at me like I, like, you know, I was like on another planet. And he, and he was like, no, this is judo. And then this is kata, this kata. So it's interesting to see that you've got a certain amount of people following the karate throwing element from the kata and then people who disregard kata totally because we've already got judo why do we need to do that yeah yeah um so that i mean that was that was you know time <laughs> for me and uh, yeah, we I all mean, come across those points yeah and it made me think do i well just forget kata again you know and then when when now we're on lockdown and um, even <laughs> bjj guys are making kata right <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly yeah, like you said, it kata kind of comes round in cycles. I think Pers when you personally train it, and it it, it, it you go through. I went through the competitive side of it, and then went through the application side of it, uh, and then didn't drop it, but it just sat there while I wasn't really studying it that much, while I was doing other things, and then because I was doing other things, it brought life back into the kata again. Yeah. Again, like you say, it's because you're always steady in kata, aren't you? That's what you are. It. Yeah. it just it just goes in cycles. It goes yeah. in ebbs and flows, and now it comes back round again because we you know we're isolated and you need to keep mobile and yeah. keep healthy. And there you go, and it comes back round. You don't have to do it. You know, you can do it. it. It does so much. You can do it flat out to get yourself a good cardio workout, or you can do it really nice and slow control just to wake up the joints and calm the mind. This has got a lot to offer, but. People who don't understand it just seem to label it and, and box yeah. it and put it somewhere else. Well, that's a good thing now. I mean, they, you know, there's, there's loads of stuff out there, isn't there? Kato that people yeah. can copy. So, yeah. you know, um, I forget the guy's name now, but he did a really, I found it funny. It was the, he was mimicking Jesse, the, the, the karate nerd, and he dressed oh, up yeah. like him with a wig and all the rest of it. And I, I laughed hard, you know, at that. That was really funny. And then um, I've seen that Jesse's put out a video now where he teaches him and gets him to practice kata. Um, oh, yes, I did see him. Yeah, because yeah, the guy is obviously had a, 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 maybe not a great instructor. And um, yeah. it, whatever, isn't it? So I, I think, you know, to kind of cap this as a topic, I think if you haven't practiced kata, give it a go. You know, but my, my advice to you would be think of it as like moving meditation to get the breath and the whole body together. Exactly, isn't? exactly. Especially as we're getting older. Yeah, oh, <laughs> that's what I that's what I well, <clears throat> it's been great to talk to you, Lee. Yeah, it's good to see you, Lee. Uh, I just, um, I'm hoping that, you know, um, I'll, I'll, what I'll do is once I've done this, I'll put our like, contact details in it. And um, yeah, yeah. I, I'm hoping that we can hook up a little bit more with some of the other guys who are putting stuff out as well. And, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and to on keeping on the mental health part, because this is one of the, the key things that I was trying to do with this, is that yeah, yeah. <clears throat> the, the, the thing is, for your own uh, mind, you need to, hear it. it's like when you have a problem and you talk out loud and you think actually it's not a bigger problem as i thought it was because yeah. it's past the lips so the you know, yeah yeah and actually speaking to someone you don't know um is not exactly like you know if you would call up um a support line that is literally someone you don't know but there's different levels of pe knowing people isn't it like we know yeah. each other but we don't like spend weekends together or whatever um yeah. so it, there's it's actually speaking to someone the, and telling them what the problem is just to help you to, to kind of unload a little bit, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Always helps to talk. It always helps to talk. And anybody wants to like 
talk crap with me for an hour, that's completely fine. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, um, I'll see you soon. Look, good luck with um, all the lessons and keeping the club going, and forgive my best to your family. And you, thanks for the chat. Stay safe, dude.